Salutations, everyone. Welcome back to another Total Warhammer 3 guide. I'm Lord Formand, and today we'll be covering 10 tips on how to play the basic dwarfs better. This is not the Chaos Dwarfs. I've already covered those. This is the basic dwarfs. So let's jump right into it. Tip 1. Dwarf archers are more valuable than low units should be. So this is referring to the Quarrelers. So these are like a basic range unit on steroids. They really should be ranked too. These guys are armored and shielded, so they block range and they take less damage from non-armor piercing range. They've got a large range, they do decent damage, and more importantly, the difference between them and a Dwarf Warrior, if we were to compare their stats here, is pretty much mainly tiny bit of melee attack and melee defense. Um, so if they're fighting, they will take more casualties, but by and large, they will do about as much damage in combat as an actual Dwarf Warrior, um, although they're slightly more vulnerable to range. Basically, Quarrelers are a very, very good early game unit for the Dwarves, um, and they can last quite a while. And even the later Dwarf Archer units, the um, Rangers, are very useful as well. Um, basically, for a faction that doesn't have a lot of range units um, until you get into guns, the Dwarf Archers are some of the best in the game, and you should definitely use Quarrelers wherever you can at the beginning. They're very cost-effective, and in a pinch, they're decent melee fighters as well. Tip 2, and arguably most people know this, but it still needs to be emphasized. The Dwarfs are a defensive race. They're almost in entirely about defense. They're defensive in battle, they're defensive in their campaign, they're defensive virtually everywhere. Um, they gain immense defenses um, from various buildings, but also if they fight battles, and they fight battles in their own land, they have a unique occupation option, or sorry, victory option called Drink to Victory, which you should use pretty much most of the time. Um, it gives income from buildings, growth, and control in your local provinces, clearly indicating you should be fighting in your own territory if you want the most money and growth for the dwarves, which is totally great because the dwarf infantry line is amazingly strong, and the odds are the dwarves with their high leadership armor and decent combat strength tend to die where they stand rather than route, not to the level of like vampires or uh, chaos. But compared to most average units, green skins in particular, they will hold the line almost forever. They're very defensive, though. Don't expect to rampage across the map. They're meant to be used to defend and then counterattack. Tip three. The dwarves are a very interesting faction because in order to get kills and get them effectively, you really need to lean heavily into using their archers, their artillery, their flame units, and to some degree some of their um, flying machines to really get kills at a consistent rate. Your infantry units are more there to hold the line to protect your artillery, archers, and various other units. Some of them, late units like uh, hammers here and stuff, will get plenty of kills, but by and large, if you're struggling to kill armies as dwarves, first off, play more defensively, don't get flanked, but also use artillery archers and flame units to get your kills. It will make a difference, especially against weak units. Flame units in particular will absolutely ruin the day of undead and skaven. Tip four, and this one is extremely important. The dwarves have amazing garrison buildings. They have some of the strongest ones in the game, since every single dwarf unit is pretty good. In fact, I, it's hard to find a dwarf unit that sucks. Um, their garrisons, specifically the ones in their major settlements with quarrelers, longbeards, ironbreakers, and grudge throwers, make taking a dwarf capital settlement an absolute nightmare just from the garrison, let alone if there's an army in it defending as well. It adds more leadership so the dwarves don't rout, takes less attrition under siege, and some of those tower projectiles will absolutely ruin any invader's day. It, unlike many of the other factions, the chaos, uh, sorry, not the chaos, the basic dwarves, just similar to their chaos dwarf cousins, even have decent garrisons in their minor settlements. Now, they're not amazing, but if you assume you get six more units and dwarf units stand and fight this will allow even your minor settlements to hold off um raiding parties and small armies and more importantly it will make it a pain for enemies to take 
So it's actually one of the few factions where throwing down garrisons and minor settlements can be useful, since losing settlements really hurts as the dwarf since you're defensive. This will weaken the invading armies and make it much easier for your counterattacks, if not stopping the invasion completely. Number five, solid economy, basic economy building. So the dwarfs, unlike some other settlements, don't have weird, complicated ways of making money. Their way of making money is pretty straightforward. They build the trinket maker and they upgrade it. Sometimes they throw a guild marketplace in it to boost it further. However, the dwarves have a very good basic economy building. Um, it pays for itself in five turns once you build it. Later levels, it will generate 600 per turn. This is hard to match outside of factions like Bretonia, who has multiple stacking bonuses, or some other factions with like slaves and stuff. Outside of that, the dwarves have one of the easiest, but also one of the best economy buildings in the game. The downside, of course, is dwarf units are relatively expensive to maintain. Um, but remember, you do get bonuses if you fight battles in your land, which can allow you to get a boost of income, build up a larger army, and counterattack. So build that basic economy building everywhere. Even if it only lasts six turns, it's 200 plus gold that you've gained out of it. All your minor settlements and your major settlements should have economy buildings, unlike other factions. Tip six. Try to kill your grudges from the Great Book of Grudges, but don't panic too much about them. So the dwarves have a mechanic where wrongs done against them go in this book. And you if you don't complete the grudges um, or avenge the grudges, the problems will get worse and worse. And at the end, you'll have some large control, research, and diplomatic relation penalties with the other dwarves. You want to try and clear them because they will give you oath gold. And by and large, they will be the enemies you're fighting. So try and clear them, but don't panic too much about them. Even at the end, you're looking at a control penalty relationship with other dwarves don't worry about it almost all the dwarves will love to be your friend regardless of this the research rate definitely hurts on the other hand you get slayers and you get charge bonuses so work on the grudges don't panic too much honestly if you're worried about public order just throw down a refractory in your province and you're gonna have counteracted that whole public order problem and in fact gained money from beer kegs tip seven slayers are instantly recruitable so a common mistake I see being made by lots of dwarf players is refusing to use or not remembering to use the fact that slayers, as well as your other regiments of renown, if you can play them, if you have them, are instantly recruitable. So the dwarves struggle on offense. However, once the dwarves go on offense, you can very quickly replenish your army by using the instant recruitment of regiments of renown and the slayers. Plus you get slayers, the more slayers um, as your grudges are less done so the dwarves actually have a comeback mechanic if you are getting beaten you will have more instantly recruitable units and go on offense then one downside is you do need a large treasury treasury to raise them but it allows the dwarves to lose units on the offense and replenish them faster than most other factions as in they get them instantly and they keep pushing um uh, it is important to note that the dwarves do struggle a bit with replenishment, um, so definitely make sure you get replenishment where you can. But regardless, the ability to instantly recruit a large pool of real, fairly strong units early game and throughout the game on offense is a very solid benefit of the dwarves, and you should use it when you go on offense. Tip 8. Dwarf units, by and large, are massively armored but you do have to be wary of armor pen. Even the basic dwarf archer unit has 80 armor, which is pretty much unheard of for a basic unit in this game, especially a level one unit. Now, others have less. If you start using slayers, for example, they run around basically, well, pretty much topless. Um, they have no armor whatsoever. Um, so just be aware of that. However, the biggest weakness for the dwarves is armor penetrating, specifically factions that bring plenty of it to the table. So dark elves are actually one of the worst enemies for dwarves to write. Corn can be pretty nasty with their blood letters being armor pen. Warriors of Chaos are, might be the only other faction that is just as heavily armored as you and has easy access to armor pen. So just be aware of those. Um, your armies will do significantly worse versus those factions, and it's not uncommon for a dwarf player to end up on one of my videos going, help, I started fighting the Dark Elves and all of a sudden my winning army got absolutely crushed. I've seen it before. 
It's due to the armor pen. Beware armor pen exist, meaning they will negate a large portion of your armor. And the dwarves rely on outlasting opponents. So having armor removed really hurts them as a faction. Tip nine, underway stance. So most people know the underway stance exists and you should be using it if you're playing as any faction with it. it is amazing. So it allows you to easily jump across mountain ranges, avoid terrain stuff like crossing rivers or swamps, meaning you can be standing here and jump to here without having to walk all the way around. It is a huge mobility bonus, especially for a faction that's notorious for being slow on the battlefield. They are surprisingly fast to get around the map. The other huge benefit that most people forget, and it determines a good Total Warhammer player from a great Total Warhammer player, is that you're immune to attrition in that stance. This means if it's chaos attrition, skaven attrition, vampiric attrition, or any other type of attrition you can basically think of, except for plagues if they get on your army, um, you can just ignore it. You just underway your way across the chaos wastes, losing no units and showing up next to their settlements at full health. It is amazing. You should be using it. Be aware that you can be intercepted. Thankfully, a fully built up dwarf army can pretty much crush any other army in straight on combat. The problem is you can field very few of them. So just be aware the underway stance allows for more tactical control of the map than most other factions. Use it to control your mountain ranges. Use it to jump across them to attack from weird angles. Remember, defensive sieve. So if the enemy invades, you can easily jump behind them and take their settlements while they're still slowly walking their way around your land. Like if they were in Karg Drun and they don't have underway, they have to walk all the way around to attack Pillars of Grungi. You can just jump across. It is absolutely amazing. And it's one of the biggest benefits to playing the Dwarf, especially since getting intercepted is not as big of a downside for them as other factions. And finally, tip 10, you have no spear units as dwarves, and you also have no cav units. This is a huge downside. You have a very narrow roster. You are infantry, some flying units, and artillery, and that is pretty much it. Um, cav is your worst enemy, along with armor pen. Um, armor pen and cav just is doubling up on the pain. Um, the lack of spears can really hurt you there. The trick, and it, I'm glad they introduced it in Total Warhammer 3, is get alliances with factions that do have them. Bretonia can give you cavalry units for the dwarves, which gets rid of one of their major weaknesses of slowness, as well as unable to do quick flanks. And the Empire, in particular, has um, halibadiers. Um, they are very good anti-cav units. Those are the ones you want to try and keep alliances with. Thankfully, you're kind of good, good aligned order aligned, so you can usually make friends and keep them. Use them, recruit them, fill out your roster, and all of a sudden the dwarves will play much easier, especially late game or even multiplayer where people know what the dwarves' weaknesses are and will abuse them against you. And that is the end of the guide. Hopefully these 10 tips have helped you. Hopefully it wasn't too long. If you want a bigger explanation, go check out the full dwarf guide. But regardless, if you liked the video and it helps, likes, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff, or leave your own tips below. And I will see you in another video or a Let's Play. Bye for now.